Hello. Today we're starting the first part of a bigger project where we're creating a dice game uh, and this dice game we're creating is called Yahtzee. Eventually this dice game, uh, our, our Yahtzee game, will have a user interface to it. It'll look a lot like a, a typical iPhone or iPad app where you can tap on a button and have the dice roll we can watch them roll, and if we roll uh, all five dice and they're all the same, uh, it'll flash up a message that says, Yahtzee, you win, something like that, okay? So Yahtzee, if you haven't played Yahtzee, it's a real simple dice game. It's played with five dice, uh, and each dice has six sides to it, and when you roll the dice, uh, one of the ways you get lots of points and win the game is if you roll the dice and all five of the numbers that pop up on top are the same. If they're all identical, then you win. It's called Yahtzee, and, and, and you're the winner. So uh, we're going to try to model that. And today, in the first part of this, we're just going to be worried about, you know, how do you play the game? How do we represent the dice? How do we tell the dice to roll? And how do we show what the top number on each dice is and so, stuff like that? Okay, so that's the first part of today. Uh, and then in the second part, we'll uh, extend that to make a dice game where we have some collection of dice and we can roll all the dice and those kinds of things. And then in part three, we'll start adding the user interface to it, uh, a button that shows uh, us uh, tap, uh, when we tap it, we'll roll the dice and a message that says Yahtzee if we roll all five with the same and so on. So let's start today, open your playgrounds, and we'll click in the upper left, we'll say new playground. And while we develop this model, I want to be able to print some information to the screens when we test things out. So I'm going to use this answers template down here. And the answers template lets us um, put some of our uh, output to the screen. So let's say get. And instead of calling it answers, I'm going to tap on the title here and change this to call it maybe Yahtzee Game. Yahtzee Game. All right. Now, when I tap on Yahtzee Game here, uh, this template has a couple uh, commands that come with it that we can use. And one of them is called the show command that lets us print things to the screen. And we're going to use that uh, quite a bit today. So, uh, but I don't need this code right now. Uh, the other, just for your interest, is called ask, and ask gets some information from the user, uh, but we won't be using that today. So uh, let's just go ahead and clear all this code out because it's time to uh, start making what we're going to call the model of our game. And it's a model because it's used to represent the game. It's going to be some code that represents the dice game called Yahtzee. So what we want in here is nothing about our user interface. We don't want buttons and labels and things like that. Here we just want to represent the abstract idea of, of dice, of a collection of dice, and, and the game Yahtzee. So let's start with the basic part of it. Since the Yahtzee game is made with a collection of dice, we probably want to be able to model a single dice, okay? And uh, uh, since we don't have a dice class in Swift, so we, since we don't have a type called dice, we need to create our own custom type. If we want to be able to create instances of, of a dice, we need to uh, create a class that will represent that, our own custom type, right? So I'm going to be a little bit silly here, and instead of calling it dice, because dice is the means multiple dice, and a lot of people uh, call a single dice, instead of calling it a die, which is the word you're supposed to use, they call it also dice, a dice. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be a little bit silly here and take, take my cue from the plural mice and lice, and the singular version of those is mouse or louse and I'm going to create a class called douse where douse is going to represent a single dice okay so we'll say in here this is this class is used to model a single dice 
okay? Now, whenever we think about types, custom types that we need to make, of course, we want to think about its properties and behaviors. So we'll say, what are the properties and behaviors of a douse? Okay, one of the properties of a douse is its number of sides. Uh, a douse usually has six sides, but you might have seen uh, games which come with different kinds of dice that have different numbers of sides. I've seen games, for example, that have eight-sided uh, dice and 12-sided dice, 24-sided dice, and even I've heard of games that have 21-sided dice. So if we want to be good developers, good software developers, we want to create a class that we can use over and over and over again, a reusable douse class. And if we ever want to, say, you know, model a Dungeons and Dragons game or something like that that has dice with different numbers of sides, then we should make this uh, be general. So uh, one thing we want in here as a property is our each, each douse will have uh, a number of sides associated with it. Now most of ours will have six so let's go ahead and give that to be our value in here initialize it with the value six but we will also let our user create a, uh, a dice of a different number of sides and we do that with what's called an initializer method. Okay we talked about this a little bit before but the way to do this is uh, you have an initializer uh, and it's a special function and in here you can put parameters uh, or and so we could say maybe uh, we want to be able to initialize a douse with sides and uh, then the user will give it a number of sides which is an integer so that's how we would uh, set up its parameters like that so the way this would be called is you would say uh, create a douse with some number of sides, say 12, and that would give us a 12-sided douse. So now inside this initializer method, of course, what we need to do is set the number of sides of our douse. So that's what we'll do. We'll say whenever somebody creates one, we're passing in a new value for number of sides. We'll set number of sides, the property of the douse, to be equal to the value they pass in n. Okay? There it is. That's going to uh, create a douse with some number of sides. Now, um, when the other thing that we want to maybe represent, uh, one of the properties we want to represent for any dice is the number that's showing on the top, right? Because after you roll it, some number is going to show up on the top. So maybe that property here, we'll call that a top number top number is the number that's showing on the top and we can initialize that to three so that when we uh, maybe create a new douse we'll just say it always is going to pop up with the value three on it okay and now for as far as behaviors go about the only thing I think we want our our douse to be able to do is to roll okay so that's a good behavior here so remember behaviors in in custom types or class we say func roll okay and when we roll that dice our top number is going to be assigned to some other value right so here we'll say assign top number to a value between one and I suppose it should go between one and number of sides right between one and number of sides okay so how do we do this in code well we say top number is assigned to and then we want to use our arc for random method arc for random this function here this function here takes a unsigned integer that's what that is and it returns a value between 0 and that number right there. OK, 
okay, zero and that number that we pass in there. So the number we pass in here, well, we want that to be number of sides because that's the biggest random number we want. Uh, but we need to convert that to a uint32. So the way to do that is to say uint32. And because number of sides is an int, and we just say uint32, convert that to a, a convert number of sides to a uint32. And now this should work uh, fine, except that top number here is an integer. And if I look for arc for random and I click the help button here, it says it returns a uint32. And we don't want a uint32, we want an integer. So we need to, before we assign top number to this, we need to convert the uh, return value to an int. So let's do this, let's say int, and we'll uh, take uh, this stuff right in here and we'll cut it out of here and we'll put it inside there right in here so this will convert uh, the uint32 that returns from arc4 random into an integer and that will be assigned to top number okay so uh, don't worry if you didn't totally follow all that. All we're really doing here is we're saying uh, top number is hopefully going to be a value between one and number of sides. <clears throat> but to test this out, test this out, we need to create a new instance of douse. Say var my douse and assign it to be a new douse like this and uh, our way we create things is by saying with sides because we created an initializer that takes a number of sides um, let's go ahead and test this out by saying we want a 12-sided douse okay and then we can use the show command that comes with this template to show my douse's top number okay the number that's showing on the top of the douse so if we run this, well, hopefully we've created a, an instance of douse called my douse, and we'll print out its top number here. Let's print that out. Okay, the value three shows up, which isn't surprising because uh, every douse we create is given a top number of three. Now, if we would like, we can maybe before we show this, let's go ahead and roll it. So my douse dot roll we'll roll that douse and we'll see what the value is 11 okay good that's a number between 1 and 12 but to maybe thoroughly test this maybe let's do let's roll it a hundred times and make sure we get a hundred different values so for something in the range 1 to 100 Let's go ahead and roll the douse and show its value 100 times. Okay, if we run that, we're looking for values between 1 and 12, right? So far, so good. Uh oh, I saw a 0 show up. And uh, yes, I'm seeing 0 show up and I'm not seeing any 12s. So we may need to look at our roll function here quickly before we move on. All right, and in our role function, uh, I'm remembering now that arc for random, while it's a nice function, this function, I remember, returns a value between 0 and the number you pass in, not including the number you pass in. So in our case, that should return a value between 0 and 11, one less than uh, 12 that we pass in. And really what we want is a range of random numbers between 1 and 12. So a way to do this would be to just simply add 1 to the value that comes back from arc for random. So if it returns values from 0 to 11, if we add 1 to it, we're going to get values in our top number between 1 and 12, which is what we want. So let's try this again. And yep, yeah, there's a 12 and I'm not seeing any zeros, that's good, but I am seeing some ones. So it looks like we're getting values between 1 and 12 right now. Good. Uh, let's also test this by changing our number of sides to be a six-sided douse. OK, 
Okay, and let's run it again. Because this is like a Monopoly dice or a Yahtzee dice. And we're getting values between 1 and 6, which is exactly what we want. Okay, great. So um, this is good for today, and uh, we're going to build on this next time. In part two, we're going to create a dice game. And again, since there's no uh, type in Swift called dice game, we'll need to create our own custom type. And uh, that custom type might have some properties like, you know, a collection of dice. So if we want to represent more than one douse, we can uh, represent a collection of dice and we'll need, need to be able to roll all those dice and we'll maybe need to be able to check for Yahtzee and things like that in, in, that, in, that, in, that, uh, in that new type. So just to review what we did here, well, we wanted to represent a single dice, so we created a class called douse. And the properties of a single douse are the number of sides in that, in that dice. Uh, the top number, whatever number is showing up. And we wanted to be able to create a douse with any given number of sides because we're good programmers and we want to be able to reuse this class sometime later, uh, maybe in a game of Dungeons and Dragons where we need a 21-sided douse or something like that or some other game. And we also want to be able to roll our, our dice. Uh, one thing I was thinking of right now when we were talking about this initializer here Maybe instead of always having the top number be 3, a good thing to do is after we create a douse with a given number of sides, is let's immediately roll that douse. Okay? So we don't always know that our, our, our initial douse will show up with a 3. It'll automatically show up with a top number that's something between 1 and that, and that, and that, and that, and the number of sides. Okay? All right, there, I think that's a nice class, uh, and we have some nice testing code here. So we'll start next time by extending this to create a new class uh, that creates a, um, a dice game, okay? So we'll see you next time in part two.